Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! But he gives a shit! It's fucking embarrassing! It doesn't matter what you think! That's what she said. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. What? Hello, retard alert. Now for something completely different. Beautiful football! Look at this football! Oh, oh my football! This is amazing! Quite amazing! And shot drop in! Make I pop in! It's a beautiful, it's a comparable, pretty incredible, so incredible, so incomparable, we got it beautiful, we got it beautiful, we What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another sort of almost post-COVID-19 Sports Church show. We're getting a little more sports online, but I'm your host here on Sports Church, John Kerman, a.k.a. Mini United States Marine Corps Veteran, OG, the Veteran Radio Syndicate, Card Care Member, the E4 Mafia, 2311 was my MOS, I.E. Joining me tonight is a regular crew, minus one. Pook is absent. We can't moot the Pook this week. <clears throat> he is just absent Pook this week. Uh, he's dealing with some uh, some uh, personal issues, but he will be back. Uh, I, I assure you, he is he is chomping at the bit, but he's got shit he has to take care of. So we're, family comes first, and that's basically what he's dealing with. So he has been given free reign to take care of his business. Other than that, <coughs> I have Pops, my father, our auto racing escort, the man that knows more than just about anybody in anything in auto racing and follows it like a religion, which mm, kind of is. Uh, and I also got Mr. Uh, Terrell, a.k.a. Pterodactyl, a fellow United States Marine Corps veteran, a fellow cheesehead, although, you know, he's got two strikes for him. He's got one against him because he's comms and nobody likes those guys because the shit never works anyways. <laughs> but... He's here with us. He's our residential NHL expert and our one of our UFC commentators, if you will. Uh, all right, gentlemen, what's new? What's happening? Uh, give us a little hot take. Don't go too much into your into your uh, expertise, but uh, give me what's going on. How are you doing? And, and all that jazz while I do my little sharing and whatnot. Oh, I'm uh, doing fine. Uh, took care of a few projects around the house. Uh, headed into town with my wife today. Went out to you with her. Went to the Texas Roadhouse. Now it's finally open again. So how that was that? Heads. How was that? By the way, like what, what what was that like? How many people were allowed in there? Like were they all spaced uh, out on tables? They, yeah, they had basically every other table had like one of those signs on it, like this space is reserved because of social distancing or whatever. So every other table was shut down, and then uh, so you're spaced out basically every other table and. Um, I mean, we went in the afternoon here, and it wasn't overly packed. We had to wait for, I think, 15 minutes to get in. Um, and then our table got called. Uh, so, yeah, I got the uh, I got the ribs and uh, ribeye and ribs combo with the uh, loaded steak fries and uh, some uh, corn with it. It was real good. So, still good food. Um Forgot no about. Fair. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting I forgot talking like that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. You gotta say something because they do like a military discount, and I I really don't care about that. But my wife does, <laughs> so it's, yeah. like uh, she's like, go. we got charged. Then she's like, hey, you forgot? They didn't take the ten percent off or whatever. I'm like, oh, I didn't say anything to him, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. I really, I, I, it's nice that they do it, but. You know, I didn't really join just to get a discount everywhere I go. So it's <laughs> not a big deal to me if I miss out on it every once in a while either. No, I don't, um, I don't, I didn't do, I don't, I don't, I've never asked. Well, you know, I take that back. I have done it on Veterans Day and it's usually like there's a couple of restaurants, really nice restaurants. You know, we're talking like $125, $150 minimum check, right? And they'll off, they offer veterans a free meal. So, I think we've done it ever since we've been together. She lines it up. We go. 
We, you know, of course, they have a menu, limited menu that you order off of, for me, at least, right? And there's always something mm-hmm. in there that I'm on, and I'll order that, and then she'll order whatever we want, and we get appetizers, and we get wine, and we still end up with a $225 check, and I still tip on top of what <laughs> my meal would have been anyway. So if you think I'm a freeloader, piss off, because I spent 20 years in the service <laughs> industry. You think I'm going to, you know, screw a restaurant or screw a server over? Hell no, but I, I, I you know, I'm a t-shirt jeans guy. Uh, always have been, right? So I wear, and I try to support my veteran businesses so i buy a lot of veteran t-shirts and uh <coughs> none of them are thank you for my service shit because i don't you know i always feel a little awkward <laughs> when somebody says that to me but i'll i usually reply the same yeah, way every time it's is, always kind of weird it's yeah, just yeah. like oh you, thank you <laughs> i just always I never know that, what to say. don't worry i volunteered and they paid me so we're all good you know don't worry about it but uh yeah but i'll go to home depot or lowe's or menards or whatever to buy supplies for work or, or just for the house or whatever. And I'm wearing one of these damn t-shirts and they just automatically I get my receipt. I'm like, huh? 10% uh-uh, whatever your money. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not demanding it. I'm not, you shall, I'm not, you know, unfurling my cape with the big super vet on it and say, you know, give me my discount. I deserve this. I even thought, no, <laughs> fuck that. Whatever. Pfft, nah, you give yeah. it to me. Fine. I'm not going to ask for it. But I mean, if you're blatantly going to give me a free meal, I'm not going to Outback to get my free meal. I'm sorry. That you know, no nothing against Outback, but if I'm going to get a free meal, I'm going to go somewhere like that's. I'm putting a suit and tie on. All right, people. That's when I'm going to do it, and I'm going to order an expensive bottle of wine. I'm going to do some appetizers I normally wouldn't do, and I'm going to tip on top of what it would have been anyway. So, anyways, anything else, T? Yeah. Uh, as far as. What I'm going to be getting into today is just, uh, yeah, hockey's got a 24-team uh, uh, playoff set up. So seven teams, uh, their season's over, and we'll have a 10-month break before they get to play hockey again because the uh, regular season next year is going to be pushed back to January. So I'll get into that more in our hockey segment. Awesome. Pops, what's new? What's happening? How's life? How's uh, how's um, Mount Washington Lul training? <laughs> Mount Washington, Kentucky is, is fine. Um, and we're, we're not under a, we're, oh, that's right. We're not under a curfew in Mount Washington. Louisville is under a curfew. So I can't go like three blocks down the street, but I can stay here. <laughs> uh, um, the uh, NASCAR is, is, I think they got, they're down like 25 laps to go and they may get done by the time we were, we're finishing up the program. Uh, it is still wild though, to look at the, the, the speedway in Bristol and, and see no fans. I mean, that is just a, a humongous, humongous aluminum bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and with no fans there, it's got to be ungodly loud. It's, that's an amazing place. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to be, yeah, definitely got to be weird right now. Just, I mean, you know, <laughs> everything that's going on right now has got to be you know, weird. You know, uh, the wife asked me uh, today, she's like, what do you think about, because uh, you know, I was watching, I'm watching a lot more of the UFC lately, and she goes, what do you think of this? I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. Uh, I like it and I don't like it. I don't like it because you're missing some of the atmosphere. Even though I'm not there, you still get some of the crowd noise and the, kind of the juice from it. But uh, it is pretty cool to hear like fists hit faces and knees hit groins, or, or you know, and you can hear a leg kick. You can literally hear the leg kick. Yeah, you know, uh, there was a funny... and you can hear the corner. Yes, you can hear the, you can hear the, you can hear the corner talking to them, so and you can hear the announcers. Cool talking and the fighters can hear the announcers talking it was i i don't know if i mentioned this a couple weeks ago i think it was the hardy fight right where he was kind of messing around uh and you know great hardy former nfl uh football player turned ufc fighter and uh heavyweight of course uh weird but uh he he, uh he was kind of you know pitter pattering around the first couple rounds and daniel cormier is a ufc hall of famer now a a commentator Basically, he was laying out what he was doing wrong, and, you know, they're all trying to talk loudly. So even when the fight's not going on, they're still talking loudly because they're just trying to get that, you know, that yeah. feel, that excitement in there. Dad knows all about that. And <laughs> um, and he adjusted, and after the fight, said, yeah, I heard Cormier and over on the table tell me what I was doing wrong, so I just adjusted, and then he ended up winning the fight. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a neat, a neat thing in there, you know. Joe Rogan and Cormier are yelling at me. I'm probably going to listen a little bit more. But you couldn't hear that when the fans are there. So there's a different aspect to that. Um, yeah, other than, that you was, know. 
Go ahead. Was that fight against uh, who was that? The cast, the Castro, or whoever that he fought? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, when he, yeah. When he fought the Castro, which yeah, the, the that was all we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Like yeah, I I kind of thought the Castro on that fight, but it was like unanimous decision, and I think they were all three <laughs> rounds to none on giving Hardy the win. But yeah, I thought the first two rounds he didn't look that great. No, he didn't. He didn't, but he, he did. He did certainly turn around, and he he accredited yeah, to the, the commentators. <laughs> yeah, in the third round, I, I thought he lost the first two rounds. So, so kind of, I don't know. I remember that fight, though. I remember watching that. That was the one we tried to live stream during. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, well, yeah, we were doing the COVID nineteen. We're bored as fuck. Uh, you know, COVID nineteen quarantine bored as fuck show and uh Yeah, yeah. Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. And Saturday watching night. it and arguing with the computer as it kept kicking us out because everybody in the person was watching that fight. So it kept crashing the site. Uh, well yeah, that was the first sport to come back. That was the first sports event to come back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely it was. And that uh, night was the first one too. <laughs> so <laughs> To get a little business out of the way to those that paved the way for us, to those that served beside us, to those who will follow in our footsteps, to those we lost in far off lands, and to those we lost to the demons they could not outrun at home. Sports Church salutes you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really don't like John Jameson, just saying. Anyways, um, all right, not much new with me, uh, other than, you know, being in a lockdown again, uh, <laughs> from 9 p.m. last night till 6 a.m. this morning, tonight and tomorrow, uh, Cincinnati is the city is locked down, and I still live in the city, so I am locked down as uh, as one hour and 46 minutes from now. I'm not allowed to leave my home, so that's awesome. Got that so basically going for when me. the show's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're you're stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> That's all right. Well, I'm good. I'll be all right. Um, well, at least you're used to it with the COVID thing going on. You couldn't go out anyway. At least now you got a reason why you can't go out. Yeah, yeah. It's even worse now. It's just kind of like I'm in jail and I didn't do anything. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know, I never really went out that much to begin with. You know, surprising fact about me, a lot of people don't understand. I'm really not that much of an outgoing dude. Uh, I don't go out a lot. I don't interact with a ton of people. I have a very, very small cl- uh, circle of friends, you know. The old uh, Tombstone quote, you know, shit, Doc, I got a lot of friends. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. My, my circle is comparatively small. I see what most people consider friends, and mine is like, mm, like that. Um, so, but this is just, uh, this is getting weird, and, and hopefully we'll just stick to the script, stick to some sports, and maybe distract you all for a little bit while, you know, auto zones and targets across the country burn up in flames for some odd unknown reason. But, uh, yeah, uh, let's start out with some uh, NHL news. We, we've we got the uh, NHL has decided on a 24-team playoff. Um, seven teams being left out, I think you told me earlier. All of them in California, yep. which is fine with me because they can't make their own ice technically anyway, so screw them. But, uh, yeah, three teams from California are out of the playoffs. <laughs> No. Yeah. So, and then with that, there's a there's going to be two hub cities that haven't considered they haven't uh, figured out what the uh, hub cities are going to be exactly yet. But the finalists right now are Chicago, Illinois, Columbus, Ohio, Dallas, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Las Vegas, Nevada, Los Angeles, California, uh, Minneapolis, Saint Paul, Minnesota, which you know. That is, What's going? What's going on there? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they'll be doing anything. They might. <laughs> will there be a stadium there for them to have well, the that, games in? A, and and they won't uh, be able to make ice because the stadium will be on fire. Right. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, Toronto, Ontario, down, and Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, um, we gotta give the Canadians some some love. Let's put yeah. one. Let's we'll put one in. Uh, let's put one hub in uh, Alberta. Yeah, so and Calgary, or, in, uh, no, Edmonton. Yeah, Edmonton, Edmonton a, okay. and then uh, one in, Calgary like, is not. St. Louis or something, in the middle of the country where people can, if they're, if they're allowed to, can go travel to. It's easy. It's a hub. It's, yeah. you know, or Kansas Saint, City or Saint, some, something that's easy for people well, to get to if, they, if they're if they even allowed to. With, yeah, that's the thing, though. Even with these hub cities, um, the way it sounds, 
at least the last set of plans I heard, they're not going to be allowing crowds in for these games. Get the Which, f- yeah, that's going to be weird having a Stanley Cup playoff with no crowds. Um, like I said, and then there's going to be the uh, the whole face mask helmets, no fighting, uh, li- trying to limit contact on the board to limit injuries. Why don't so, we just not fucking have hockey then? Yeah, I that's, mean, Jesus. that's kind of the way I feel about it. I haven't heard anything about those those initial rule changes being changed. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to go through for sure or not. But, yeah, the last I had heard, those were the plans, was these full face mask helmets, which I grabbed my son's helmet to show you what I meant by that um, last week, I think it was. And then, uh, yeah, they're going to try to try to do with the uh, no – well, since you got full face masks, no fighting. It's kind of hard to punch through a birdcage. And you're not allowed to take your helmet off before you fight, so that's just an added penalty. So, um, and then yeah, they're trying to limit the uh, board contact. So what the? I don't like it. I don't like it. I'd, I'd rather see real hockey. <laughs> um, it's like if you if you're gonna bring it back this way, whoever wins the cup, it's not gonna seem legit because the rules were changed so much. And uh, yeah, and regardless of how many teams they let into the playoffs. So anyway, the way the uh, playoffs are standing right now uh, in the Eastern Conference with this 24-team playoff, the uh, Bruins, the Boston Bruins are the one seed, and they also would be the President Cup trophy winner this year since uh, they had the best record when the regular season came to an end. Uh, The Tampa Bay Lightning are at the two seed, the Washington Capitals are at the three seed, and the Philadelphia Flyers are at the four seed for the Eastern Conference, and then... The play-in games for who's going to be playing against these by teams is the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins as the five seed will be playing the Montreal Canadiens as a 12 seed. The Carolina Hurricanes will be playing the New York Rangers. Uh, that's a six and 11 matchup. <clears throat> the number seven New York Islanders will be playing the number 10 Florida Panthers. And the number eight Toronto Maple Leafs will be playing the number nine Blue Jacket, Columbus Blue Jackets. So whoever's the lowest seed to come out of that round will be playing Boston, and whoever's the best seed out of that coming out will be playing the Philadelphia Flyers. And then the lowest just, seed to come you know, out of that match round will for be number playing. two and three there. So that's how your Eastern Conference looks. Um, so I know a lot of these teams coming in, like uh, Shea Weber on the uh, Montreal Canadiens. He was one of the guys that kind of said, yeah, this, this playoff format's Kind of bogus, but I'm glad to be getting a chance to be in it. So some of the players do realize that, yeah, a lot of fans aren't going to like this, but it is what it is. Um, So in the Western Conference, we got the St. Louis Blues defending Stanley Cup champions as the number one seed in the West. The Colorado Avalanche at the two seed, the Vegas Golden Knights at the three seed, and the Dallas Stars at the four seed. Uh, The play-in games to play against those teams with the buys will be the number five Edmonton Oilers playing – the number 12 Chicago Blackhawks, who break their streak of not making the playoffs, but really they shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, number six Nashville Predators playing the Arizona, 11 Arizona Coyotes. The uh, number seven Vancouver Canucks playing the number Minnesota Wild. And the number eight Calgary Flames playing the Winnipeg Jets. Um, yeah, and then, like I said, any of the teams I didn't mention, they – are just done for the year. They're not playing hockey. So you got seven teams that are going to be going for 10 months with no hockey at all on their schedule. Um, I know like lunchboxes, Buffalo Sabres just missed making the Eastern Conference playoffs by like two games, I think it was. Yeah, he's um, used to that. Yeah. Well, and the thing, I remember a few months ago we were talking about Buffalo being on top of their division. Yeah. And it was like, oh, nice to see buffalo doing well because they have such in the states they have probably the uh biggest following hot upstate new york um and they just the sabers have not been able to put together a team that's worthy of the fan base they have out there now, last year during the playoffs buffalo was actually the top market in the u.s for those games being played even though their team wasn't even in the playoffs. <laughs> playoffs. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Um, 
And it's just unless you got any more ad about the, at the, the playoffs, please keep going. I, I have a couple off the wall NHL questions for you, hockey questions for you. So keep going. Just I don't me... got too much to add other. Yeah, we were talking earlier. California was completely shut out. So Los Angeles, the Kings didn't make the playoffs, and I'm Ducks are out of the playoffs, and the San Jose Sharks none of them made the playoffs this year. So California is completely locked out. Oh. I got. I do got their rights to go visit. Yeah, they got too I much. Mean, they stuff are to tearing do. up them cities out there. That's outrageous. Yep. Yeah, they are. I do. Got, yeah, I do got the betting lines here too for Ooh. who's the favorites. Uh, right now, both the uh, Boston Bruins and the Tampa Bay Lightning are the favorites to win the cup at a plus six fifty. Do you ever notice nobody betting. can nobody can actually ever say just Boston? Yeah. It's always Boston, <laughs> Boston. <laughs> Nobody just says uh, Boston. It's Boston. It's Boston. Yeah. Good. Keep going, man. Sorry. I'm just being they're, loopy. Yeah. They're followed by Colorado. That's at plus 700. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers and Vegas Golden Knights come in next at plus 800. <laughs> then the, uh, defending, the defending champions, the St. Louis Blues at plus 1,200. Ooh. The Penguins at 1,500. The Capitals at 16, or 1,500. Stars are at eighteen hundred. Predators are at two thousand. Edmonton Oilers are at twenty five hundred, along with the Maple Leafs. Canucks at four thousand, and then yeah, just keeps going on and on until you get down to the Winnipeg Jets, <laughs> the Montreal Canadiens, the Florida Panthers, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Columbus Blue Jackets are the longest shot bets that made this uh, playoff format, and they're all at plus sixty six hundred. Jesus, nice, <clears throat> interesting. All right, well, I'm not touching that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, no I, way. A lot of money betting on the Blackhawks if they want it, but you yeah. really could have. You really could have when the season ended. They were at plus ten thousand when the season ended. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, no, I'm good. I, 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 I don't. Plus sixty six hundred. <laughs> uh, Pook's not here to verify this, but he will later. Uh, we got our clock cleaned on NHL hockey, uh, and we kind of like decided that at that point that <laughs> we're good. We'll stick to yeah. uh, he sticks to the football. I'll stick to the baseball, and together we make money. And uh, so yeah, uh, just mm, don't if, you know. Well, I, usually, and with hockey playoffs, it is it is hard to predict the last. Well, uh, hey, I, hey, what are they, uh, let me ask you this about, and this is directly relevant to to the twenty four game playoff thing. Uh, how, how many round? How many rounds are you doing? Four. Uh, so yeah, it'll be the uh, the play in round. Then you got the four by teams, so you'll have that round. Right. And the winners of that go into the semifinals for their conferences, and then uh, or would go into the finals for their conferences, and then yeah, then the Stanley Cup. What, uh, finals. So yeah, you'd have four rounds. Okay. All right. And then how many is it going to be? Three, five, seven. Is it going to be five, seven? What's it going to be? What's every series going to be? Is it going to be one? Is, is uh, it going to be a straight the like they, one and done? Or what's it, how's it going to be? That's the other thing. Uh, uh, the after the play in round, it'll definitely be best of sevens, but they haven't yet uh, released if it's going to be best of. It's either going to be best of fives or best of sevens for the first round. Oh, don't do they that. They haven't. Just they best haven't three, five, and seven. Just go three, five, seven, seven. That's it. Just, just no. Oh, too many games. Well, it sounds like it. Yeah, it sounds like it might be, might be going five, seven, seven, seven. Jesus! Oh my God! Um, no wonder they have to push seven, the season seven, back. Seven, seven. seven. They're going to have to put they, you know wonder they have to push the season back cuz the yeah, damn playoffs are going to be done in like I don't know November at yeah, this point. At the, at this point too they haven't even given clearance for teams to go back to taking uh full practices. That doesn't sound like it's going to be happening until July. So we're not looking at these playoffs starting in until July at least. How many guys on NHL ro- uh NHL roster? Um let's see here there's uh Four lines of three forwards, so that's 12. And then three lines of two defensemen, so that'd be, uh, what, six Eight, more players? You're at 18 now, yeah. At eight, and then, and then uh, two goalies, so 20 players on a, on a roster that'll be benched. Yeah. Uh, 
I hope they. Uh, I hope they're and have their. Oh, you have no. You have no AHL affiliates to fall back on either because their seasons were all canceled and they're not bringing back their playoffs either. So you well, can't guy to rehab or anything down in the AHL. You, you know they they get they don't have those dudes on speed dial. Every GM has those dudes on speed dial. Like hey, uh, my goalie just uh, blew a hammy uh, t- putting a yeah. skate on. Like uh, you got to get up here. Yeah, but yeah, the thing is, any any of those guys that call up are going to be guys that haven't played competitive hockey since March. So if you're in the third round of the playoffs, and then all of a sudden one of your star players go down, you got to call up a guy that hasn't played gotta hockey. Got to do what you got to do, baby. Right? Like, what else choice do you have? You know, guys are going to start. You know, guys are going to go down. Like, I I'm I'm trying to. I, I was getting. I was talking to Pook about this. That we need to get a bet going. Uh, of how many hamstrings are going to be blown in the first week of baseball. Yeah. I set it over under and take bets on it because my guess is 15, at least 15 in the first week. 15 guys are going to blow hamstrings the first week of baseball. I don't yeah. think that's unrealistic. And I think, and then what I'm getting is, is hockey is that these guys have not been full practicing, not full contact. Uh, so you, I think you're going to have a lot of guys just go down, just go down yeah. from just. Well, yeah, and like with the rules they were having with not getting guy uh, trying to limit the board play and stuff, it's like I don't I don't know how the referees are going to keep that stuff in line. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have some full penalty boxes in this first round. <laughs> yeah, no I, shit. Gonna try to, guys are going to try to play the game the way they play the game. <laughs> so well, unless you guys got to watch the highlights of the of the Bristol race because it just finished and it was crazy. Cool. It was it was a race just like the good old days. And now you got Joey Logano and Chase Elliott. I think they're they're discussing throwing blows. They both taken off their helmets, so it's not going to go to blows yet. Wow! <laughs> but they they took each other out in two laps. So oh. Chase Elliott was going to win it, no ifs, ands, or buts. And and Logano got underneath him, forced him up. So Elliott, the next turn, got underneath him and took him all the way up the wall. They both destroyed the cars. He went from first to twenty second place. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know where Logano finished. He's got to be down there, too. Uh, but as usual, Brad Kasselowski comes away with a win when everything else fails. <laughs> it, but it was it was, it was was good old Bristol racing for a change. I told you I thought they ruined the track, but they somehow managed to get a good race out of it today. <laughs> oh, it is what it is. <laughs> um, you know, I like to, like to see him throw some hands. Let me apparently, s- we're not going to get that in hockey. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, when's the last time a Canadian hockey team won the NHL championship? Ah, oh, shit. Uh, I should know. that. I think it was the Montreal Canadiens were the last team. That's that what I'm thinking, but it was a minute ago. I just can't remember what year it was. Yeah, it was like it, at least a decade ago now. <laughs> I was thinking way it. more than that, but. Yeah, it's been at least that long. <laughs> I was thinking like '86 or some shit like that. For some reason, popped in my no, head. No, it hasn't been that long. Um, doobie doobie do. Yeah. Give your balls a tug, you Ted fucker. You're fucking ten ply, bud. <laughs> 1993, and it was the Montreal Canadiens. Okay. Over the uh, Los Angeles Kings. Yeah, I knew it was the Canadians. I was, was closer than you. I, I was close. <laughs> I was closer than you. I was seven years off, and you said it was a decade. Oh. Woo! Yeah. NHL expert, my ass. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just giving you shit. I kind of set you up for that one. I already looked it up. Anyways. Um, uh, it is what it is. Um, I want to ask you another one about... Um, this is something interesting. You, you've seen it. In football, uh, initially with the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, you saw initially with the Carolina Panthers, you, you saw it with the Florida Marlins, with what I'm speaking of, expansion teams. And the Las Vegas Golden Knights, was it two years ago? What, yeah, what their, the, their debut season, they went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Right, <laughs> and, 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 and they've been competitive ever since. What is that? Do you have an answer for that? Any reason? It's just the uh, organization they put together... Yeah. The, the advantage they got from drafting from wherever they wanted to for unprotected players. I mean, what's the secret there for the Knights? I mean, good for them. Bucking A, roll, you know, but Vegas loves a winner-ish. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think uh, yeah, they, they got some pretty good coaching right off the bat. Um, I think 
the way the uh, draft, when they had the expansion draft for him, I think it was set up pretty favorably to him mm-hmm. uh, for how many players each team was able to to uh, protect going into that draft. And uh, um, they had to basically choose if they were going to protect both their goalies or, or uh, protect another high-line player on their team. So they, they managed to put up, you know, four solid lines of, I mean, their first line maybe wasn't as good as the first line on any other team in the NHL, but then their fourth line was a lot better than any other team. So their uh, depth was, it was their depth that really made a difference. Yeah. Yeah. The way the uh, expansion draft uh, was set up, they, they had great depth, even though they didn't have that superstar player. And even at goaltender, they ended up getting that superstar goaltender because the uh, Penguins who have a number of, star wings and defensemen and then they also had two star goalies and Matt Murray and Mark Andre Fleury ended up deciding to protect more positional players so that left Mark Andre Fleury free to be drafted and Knights got him so is he related to another hockey player that I used to know or did know or know Fleury the uh, name rings a damn bell in hockey besides him no I think so um yeah, everybody calls him Flower. Um, I, I'm not aware of any shit. pro players it's that he was related to. But Really? Flurry uh, just seems one, just, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was him, but I swear to God there was another really good, but maybe I'm just making shit up. I don't know. I have crazy <laughs> dreams. Sometimes they creep into my regular consciousness, so who knows? But, uh, you know. Yeah, I was just I was very curious about that. I mean, I, you you've seen it and I and I guess it's kind of set up like that, right? If you have an expansion team, you want them to kind of succeed, right? So you put them on the best fair footing you can and let it go from there and and they've took it and and rolled with it. So, you know, good on them. I wonder even though Oakland is no longer the Oakland Raiders or the LA Raiders, but they're going to Vegas this year. Is that going to help them or hurt them? I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I know I'm kind of switching to NFL here real quick, but uh, shit, there's not much NFL news really going on. They're, they're still debating on whether there's going to be a season. Some people say yes. Uh, ownership says yes. Some people say no. They don't know if there's going to be people in the stands. Some people say absolutely there's going to be people in the stands. But what do you think about what do you think about the move? Just this bit of a move from... Southern California or Middle California, wherever you want. I guess it's Middle California uh, to Vegas. And another thing, <laughs> let's be honest. Vegas is known for a lot of things, and one of the one of the names it is called by is the Devil's play- Playground. So now you're taking, let's say, twenty two to thirty five. Look, the veterans, generally speaking, generally speaking, right, don't get in that much trouble. They've been in the league long enough. They know how to kind of isolate themselves, insulate themselves from shit. But now you're going to get, you know, kids from LSU, Bama, Wisconsin, Rutgers, UCLA, uh, Oregon, and they're getting first-round deals, which aren't what they used to be. But they're still – you're still basically giving a first-round draft pick a uh, 22-year-old kid – well, just for the sake of argument, ten million dollar signing bonus and whatever his contract is, his rookie contract, three, four years, whatever it is, and you're gonna stick him in Vegas. How's that gonna work? Yeah. I mean, do you, do you know what would happen to me? Well, all right, fine. Let's ask my dad, pops. I get out of the Marine Corps at 23 years old. I yeah. sign a contract with MLB Baseball. I get a signing bonus of ten million dollars and a guaranteed contract of five years at five million dollars a piece. What's going to happen to me? And, and and my team plays in Vegas. What's going to happen to me? Well, I got to get my hands on your money. We're getting my Andy car team. You'll be broke already. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to get in trouble. <laughs> like, that that would good. definitely be like, yeah, if you call me, hey, we're going to do an Indy racing team. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> as long as I can sleep in the garage, we're good. We're good. That's fine. No, that'd be the only way I'd stay out of trouble. Are you serious? You're going to put these guys in Vegas. Vegas. Where, I mean, I've literally been there. Oh God! At least. You know what's so damn funny? Think about all the think about all the players that got in trouble for associating with known gamblers. Now they're putting a team in, in a 
town owned by gamblers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, and it might it might be even a little bit easier for the team that's based out of there to keep control out of on guys. It's going to be the teams that are visiting there that they're like this is the one yeah. time of year they go there. Those are going to be the guys that are going to want to jump in there because oh, I know I noticed the yeah, stories now that they I've, got, I now mean, they got an excuse to go to Vegas. It's not yeah, not the a few, trip. It's, they got to be the there because that's work. Yeah, it's the work. Stories. The few stories of NHL players getting in trouble in Vegas I can think of are guys that were visiting players. Uh, Evander uh, Kane of the San Jose Sharks last year during the playoffs got I, he's got some kind of legal thing going on with him for a Vegas casino from when he was in town playing against the uh, Golden Knights. And uh, then there was the uh, video we covered a few few months ago of uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov. Uh, Doing rails of uh, cocaine in the hotel in a Vegas hotel room. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where did where did the capital? Who did the Capitals beat when they won their uh, Stanley Cup? The uh, Golden Knights in their first season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just so, oh, it sounds like such just it's just gonna be just a shit show. Like Jim Rome's just gonna make so much money off his bet that every week an NFL player gets arrested. Now he's gonna have to change <laughs> to every day. An NFL player gets arrested in Vegas. Like that town is just set up to be. It, it's Sin City. It's just set up for debauchery. It's, it's insane. It is literally insane. Like I have never seen anything imagine, as crazy as seen in Vegas. Imagine, if you will, that Antonio Brown somehow made it to <laughs> Vegas with the Raiders. <laughs> oh my God! Get out of here! No. <laughs> Oh my God, that poor guy, dude. I feel bad for him. Like, but you know, I don't. Just, <laughs> well, I mean, like, well, I feel He's bad for him. To himself. Well, yeah, but you know, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You know, and it's sad to see something like that. I mean, somebody that's just a freak of nature, given the greatest gifts athletically you could possibly imagine. He's a super athlete, but his head is a bunch of scrambled eggs and smothered uh, Waffle House hash browns. Like, I mean, it's just, it's terrible, you know? And I, I don't, I, I wonder if the Las Vegas Raiders are ever truly going to be competitive because, Jesus, I mean, the distractions. I mean, look, you're 23, 24, 25, 26 years old. You've you got millions of dollars in your bank account. And the world is your playground because it's literally six blocks from your freaking house. Like, I just, I don't see how that's going to work. I mean, I know MLB's talking about doing an expansion team there. It's like, holy shit. Like, I think they might be holding off. I think they're actually kind of holding off on that. Like, let's see what happens to the Raiders. Like, the Raiders are the Raiders. But now you take the Raider culture and you put it in Vegas? Oh, Oh, Jesus, that's that's not going to go well at all, is it? Like, I can't see that going well. I just I just can't. Like, I wouldn't base any operation I had in Vegas. Anything. Racing. No, no there's no. It's just, no. It's just, there's just too many distractions, too many ways to get in trouble, and just, mm, -mm. Yeah, it's, it is kind of surprising that the uh, Golden Knights have uh, been working out as good as they are out there. <laughs> yeah. All and things it considered. But, I mean, you know, go ahead and look up, uh, do me a favor, go ahead and look up the average age of the Golden Knights players versus the rest of the league. I want. I actually want to know, because I'm willing to bet that's a very veteran team filled with guys with wives with, you know, handguns that will <laughs> keep them in line, <laughs> if you will. You know, John, but, you know, it was funny. When I, when I went out to do the installation for the uh, ABC tournament, I, w I was out there for about a month. And it's amazing how easy it is just to fall into a routine that that <laughs> it's just like regular life. You just you get back to the hotel, you check in with the with the pit boss and say, you know, let me know when the table's ready. You go up and get cleaned up and you get a call and you come down, you play your cards. You, you know, it, 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 it was I don't know. You, you just get to it. To, it is not a big deal anymore. Now, now there's going to be some that just can't do that kind of stuff, I guess. But. Uh, I think the vast majority of guys will be fine, but th there's always going to be a star that really screws it up. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean I, I've always enjoyed it, but I've always been, it's funny, I've always been excited to go to Vegas. You know what the funny part about that is, though? I was always well, glad to leave. Yeah. Oh, thank God I'm out of here. 
you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty pretty decent thanks to Pook at bla- at blackjack. I'm I'm actually above decent. I think I'm a, way above average at blackjack. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I've taken a lot of money from Jesus in in uh, church fairs in this town for sure. <laughs> um, and I don't really feel bad about it either. Um, uh, but. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I, I think it takes a certain mindset. I think I, I think you gave me that. I mean, like I played blackjack. Uh, I played a a little bit of roulette, but I usually just stood and watched the the board, the tower, if you yeah, will. Yeah, I didn't ever like roulette because it, 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 you're making a guess and and you're waiting. Oh you yeah, ball balls. You know? Oh yeah. So I just sit there and watch that tower, and all right, screw it. I got I got two hundred fifty bucks. I'm gonna just go. You know, twenty five bucks a bet, and and if I just strike out, I don't. But you know, yeah. that one time you hit double zero, <laughs> yeah, woohoo! And then you run. <laughs> and, but I always ran. I hit big. I, boom! I'm gone. I'm I'm back to the bar and back to the club. I'm, I'm not gambling anymore. Um, I'm spending my money in pursuit of much more higher, lofty goals like sowing my wild oats and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> God, is my wife watching? Never mind. Um, uh, I. I don't got an average age, but I'm looking at their roster, and yeah. they only have four players that are under the age of 25. Nah, see, oh. you think that might have something to do with it? Might have something to do with it. Um, all right. Um, well, shit. Let's uh, let's move on to some racing. Let's talk about some racing, pops. What we got? You know, and I know we got some news in F1. We've got IndyCar, and we just finished up with a. Uh, <clears throat> Which you said initially was a pretty damn good race over there. In yeah, Bristol. actually, well, I it was it was a fairly boring race to be honest with you. For oh, Bristol really? Because, because there's so, so much traction there that uh, uh, everybody's controlling themselves. But when it got down to 20 laps to go, the guys started losing their heads, which is which is part of the course. Which is NASCAR, and, sure. And yeah. And you, you see two guys trying to go in the corner, and they're using eight wheels to keep traction, and neither one of them make traction, so. Uh, it was fun, but Brad Kozlowski comes away with a win. Clint Boyer finally has a good day by grabbing a second. Cool. Jimmy Johnson, who had a terrible outing earlier, came back and finished third. Kyle yeah. Busch got, got fourth. Kyle Busch, is, uh, he's been having an incredible year, but uh, uh, he, he got fourth. Uh, Eric Jones got fifth. Where did Matt finish? i got to look down and find Matt. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Else. Or is Matt Kenneth? Yeah, he said he was dropping off towards the end there. So. 16th, yeah. Finished in 16th. But on the lead lap, which is kind of cool. Uh, he never got up, never got the lead lap, which is kind of weird. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It, it was an unusual. Uh, Chase Elliott is having a remarkable year. He won, you know, won last week um, after getting crashed out uh, by Kyle Busch. Uh, that was, that was kind of weird. Uh, Kyle Busch came and nailed him on the straightaway and spun him out. And, and uh, I mean, Elliott was was going to win that race, no no ifs ands or buts. But uh, he got crashed out. Came back and won last week and looked like he was going to win tonight, and then ended up getting crashed out. So he's 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 paying his dues, I guess is what the best way to explain it, because uh, they're, they're not letting him do it. Um, and this will crack you up. I, I I've switched from the race track to the. Uh, uh, news to see what uh, what the riders are doing, and now they're attacking a, attacking a tanker truck on the expressway <laughs> in Minneapolis. Uh, and fortunately for them, the tanker truck stopped. But I'm wondering what the tanker truck is going to do now, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want anybody to try to attack my truck. <laughs> they said he almost plowed into the protesters. It wouldn't have been almost. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, no, no, no. Uh-uh. I know. I you standing in the middle of the road. I I never get that. Well, this guy slowed down. The dummy slowed down enough. They could get. They were running next to him and got in front of him. I mean, it's just like, come on, people. Um, uh, you, you Antifa, that. Antifa took over Los Angeles. Uh, they they've got the I guess the police headquarters surrounded. I don't. I. I See, you know, if they why they never called up the National Guard, I don't understand. In in Los Angeles, you know, the, their riots out there are bad anyway. But uh, you look at wherever the National Guard has been called up, it's pretty well calmed it down. But uh, the mayor don't want to call in the National Guard. I wish they'd call it here in Cincinnati just so I could steal Humvee. But what? Never mind. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> just that, but I'm, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, making a, a great point. Yeah, they should be, and they they should have gone hard in the paint from the get go. But they didn't, and uh, you know, and uh, insurance premiums will reflect that. So you know, hey, it is what it is. Well, um, hell, insurance premiums in Los Angeles got to be ridiculous out of out of the what. It's just ridiculously expensive anyway, and they, the cost of living out there is ridiculous. But they 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 still go ahead and do the dumb stuff. No, I remember. I remember paying. Uh, I moved off base, got a moonlining job at Rookie Sports Bar and Grill. Uh, I think it's twenty three sixteen El Camino Real. Uh, I still remember that. That's weird, huh? Uh, <laughs> and my rent was six fifty a month in nineteen ninety eight. For what was it? Six fifty a month. Oh, really? For a shitty two bedroom in the ghetto. Oh, that size, wasn't so. the ghetto. That was close. <laughs> it was damn close. It wasn't Logan Heights in San Diego, but it was freaking. Uh-huh. Uh... Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Jesus. You know, I just, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, Jane, Jane Lopez said she got stopped by protesters standing in the street today. Can't believe she was shooting. <laughs> Yeah, she said the police quickly had them dispersed, but yeah, I just yeah, heard. Jade said yeah, they, the protesters are standing in the road out by her. Must have got she must have got stuck in the traffic from that shit. Where's she in? Where Denver? Yeah, Denver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or just outside of Denver, anyway. <laughs> Whoo, good times! But uh, hey, at least your Avalanche are the two seed in the West. Ooh, so there's positives. Hercules, Hercules, <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> But he gives a shit. It's, it's so I'm looking at what the, what the schedule is going to be now because the uh, that's what I can do because they're going to have I guess two races a week from here on out. Uh, Martinsville. Oh, that's going to be cool. Mm. Wednesday's going to be Martinsville. That'll be a fun race. <gasps> uh, that remember that was the race that Dick Trickle said. What are these guys doing using Braille to drive? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love that track though. <laughs> the paper and clip, then, baby. After that, they, they go to Homestead, which will be fun race because they, the uh, Homestead has gotten to be a lot faster than it originally was when they they added that banking to it. Uh, then they go down to Talladega, then Pocono. So uh, they got some good races coming up. Pocono is one of my f- tracks I still haven't made my mind up on. What's that? I don't know. I like it, but it's just so weird. It's it's that and uh, what's the other track in Japan that's kind of like that a little Pocono ish? Twin Ring, Twin Ring Motegi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That it, it's it's describe Pocono for people who don't know. It's it's a weird track. Yeah. It, it, it it's it, it's like how many turns does it actually really have? <laughs> like, wow. Well, yeah, really. You know, the, the, the thing oh, is, road course. They, they, they've got an oval track there, and they got a road course there. Um, and IndyCar, IndyCar, the last time when they were there, they were supposed to to run the uh, oval, but they had the uh, the earthquake, and they tore up, <laughs> tore up the oval, so they ran the road course. <laughs> the, Jesus. the most fun fun part about the, the uh, Twin Ring Motegi is the fans. The fans are awesome over there. Yes. I mean, they just go nuts over the drivers. I mean, and they, they they would do anything, you know, to to make make sure the drivers are happy. So, uh, I think next next Saturday night is going to be the night to, to watch because any car comes back, they'll be down at Texas. Yes. Uh, and that uh, what's that going to be on? Half track, which will be fun. What's it going to be on? It'll be on NBC, the big network. It'll be on regular TV. Regular TV. Yes. Regular ass TV. I yep. love it. I mean, it means I you don't it. have to have cable to get it. I love it. Your air TV, no <laughs> one. Which is kind of remember cool. that skit that Dave Chappelle did on Chappelle's show where he's like just dancing. He's like, and it's not HBO. It's <laughs> regular ass TV. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm looking for it. So uh, wrapped up about NASCAR. Uh, IndyCar, um, what's the schedule looking like for Indy in the next uh, month or two? I mean, you just talked about um, the next race, but what else is coming up here? Hang on a second. Let me get my my screen up. 
no problem at all. By the way, did any of you guys uh, do your homework assignment that I gave you last week? Probably not. Um, what were we supposed to do? Yeah, Watch. I, I totally forgot about it. Of course you did. I, I kind of expected <laughs> your ass to, you fuck. I always forget. Senna, that. Netflix. Watch oh, Senna. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I don't I don't I, know I didn't Netflix. watch it. <laughs> well, go to a friend's house, buy him a freaking 12 pack of beer, tell him, hey, we got to watch this hour and 45 minute documentary about a race car driver. Here's some so beer. Shut buy up. Two, two 12 packs. Anyway. All right, well, all right, fine. It's Wisconsin. You're right. Good point. Um, but yeah, you guys got to watch Senna because I was actually going to talk at length about that this week. But you got to watch Senna this week. Dad, I know you got Netflix. T, figure yeah. it out. I don't give a shit how you yeah. do it. I figure got, it out. I got. I got Hulu and Disney Plus and ESPN Plus and Amazon Prime, but no Netflix. <laughs> well, freaking figure it out. It's eight ninety five a month, or just go to a friend's house and no, buy him some beers. It's a hell of a lot more expensive than that now. Is it's it? It's like twenty two bucks a month now. Is it for streaming? Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was like fifteen bucks a month when we canceled it. <laughs> it's so worth it. Yeah. Anyway, after the uh, Fort Worth, the, the, the Dallas race, they go to Indianapolis for the July 4th. Uh, and then uh, they go to Elkhart Lake for July 11th. So, And they're doing a du- – are they doing a duel at Elkhart or just one? No, they're going to do two days. That's they're going to do it the 11th and the 12th. Nice. So that, that will be a, a excellent race weekend, that's for sure. Uh, Elkhart is so pretty up there, yes. and the food is so good up there. Yes. I mean, to tell you, they, they, uh, they, they treat you right up there. Hey, do you uh, remember a story of a radiant so... – Dad, do you remember the story of a radiant – this jackass's hot dog with your um, – uh, what was it? We were running with the equipment, all the equipment, and, of course, you guys got to – let me paint the picture. We're at Elkhart Lake. We're running around trying to get interviews – trying to get it back and forth across the track. We're in a golf cart. We've got TV equipment with us. And this guy has got the this mobile transmitter that you decided to grab and tune towards this jackass's hot dog that was giving us shit <laughs> and literally started on, damn near started the thing on fire. Well, RF will do that. That's, that's, yes, that's, it that's will. The whole, that's the whole theory behind microwaves. Yeah. <laughs> The look on this guy's face is a, is a microwave transmitter. Oh, look! <laughs> I'll never forget the look on this guy's face. I'm just sitting there, just laughing my ass off. I just, oh, well, hey, don't mess with somebody who's smarter than you, bud. That's all I'm gonna <laughs> say. Because pops was all over that shit. Oh, you want to be a dick? Okay, here you go. <laughs> Should turn it on his da- face, uh, but you no, know, he just cooked his probably eight dollar hot dog back then, but. <laughs> Oh, God. Yes, it is a beautiful track. What, 4.3 miles? What is it? 13, 15 turns? I mean, one it's, of the... It's just, it's just so gorgeous. Um, it, it, I mean, there's 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 a, a high-speed section. There's a technical section. Yeah. Uh, and and just in between sections, it's just... It's just the way it flows is just so nice. Uh, it's it just... You get a driver. You got to be a good driver, and you got to have a good car. And you can put those two together, you can have an unbelievable race. But yeah, speaking of uh, great food at the uh, Road America and outside of a race while tailgating, check out our sponsor if you're going to a tailgate. Well, one of our new ones, Beard BQ Sauce. Oh, we yeah. Have- oh, yeah. There, there you go. go. We have a new host on the network, uh, Felix Irving. He's the owner of Beard BQ Sauce. You can head over to BeardBQSauce.com and put in your order. So, yeah, check them out. They are uh, now part of our network, and we're happy to have them. Absolutely. Felix is a great guy, and uh, there may be something new in the works with me and him in the future. We'll see if he agrees to my idea, but he might. (laughs) He's batshit crazy, dude. I love him. He's awesome, Uh, and he's obsessed with cooking. So absolutely look him up. And and speaking of that, I want to take Warrior Point. That's warriorpoint with an E.org. Join Warrior Point. Become part of the Uncommon Few. They have chapters in all 50 states. It's a great way to reconnect with old battle buddies, make new ones. And they also have tremendous resources for navigating the world that our veteran our veteran community finds ourselves in day-to-day. By the way, go to VetRS.com. We have shirts. I'm wearing one of them. Uh, here we go. Jody did me a favor. And uh, I think my pop's going to attest to that a few times that, uh, yeah, I uh, was away for just even a few months and uh 
Jody got my girl. So uh, good on you, Jody. Thanks, because most of them were psycho hose beasts, so it worked out for me. And uh, yeah, oh, we also have Rain's Love Violence. We also have a straight out of quarantine shirt. Um, so go to VetRS.com, check those out, and they are the cheapest shirts you're going to find around, and not because of quality. They are tremendous quality. They are great shirts. I beat the crap out of this one over the last week. Wore it to work one day on accident because I thought it was one of my work shirts. Turned out it wasn't. Um, that was funny when I showed up at work. But uh, it held up all day doing tree work. So uh, it didn't keep me from getting poison ivy, though. But, you know, hey, that's not that's not on the uh, description of, of, the, of the item. But, uh, yeah. Um, I want you guys to watch Senna. And I'm going to give Dad some time to talk about F1. But I want to talk about this one. I gave you guys a little bit of a teaser. Artem Senna, uh, probably one of my favorite drivers of all time. Uh, I like guys like this. Dad knows I like guys like this. I think Dad's more of an Alain Prost fan. I'm more of an Artem Senna fan. I could be wrong. But uh, I like Senna. He was a, a, a brash, a guy who always went for it. Uh, and <laughs> sometimes it really 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 didn't go his way but sometimes it did um it was a great race i think it was uh god it was 92 i was watching the other day it was in monaco i don't know if it was 92 it was in the rain senna was down six and a half seconds he closed the pros within i think less than half a second in six laps which on in monaco is fucking impossible he did it. He was one of those guys. And it talks about his life, his upbringing, uh, all the races, the conflict that he always felt, and, and, and the push back against him and FIA. And Dad, I don't know if you remember that name, but thank God I think he's passed away. The FIA president at the time was this Frenchman that just made you hate French people because he was just <laughs> so fucking arrogant and annoying. He was, he was FIA Keep winning. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm speaking of. Yeah, the guy with the glasses oh. and just that, oh, that that aristocratic French accent. Oh, God. <laughs> God, it just drove me nuts. But so it's a, like uh, like Sasha Baron Cohen's character in uh, Talladega Nights. Yes, but, <laughs> uh, but, but fast forward like 30 years, you know what I mean? So he's an older gentleman, silver hair, you know, big glasses that you can see into the future with. Like that guy, um, yeah. But it's a great documentary. So, be still my macchiato. Yes, please check it out. T pops, watch that. T figure out a way to do it. I don't know how, but figure out a way to do it. It's it is really you really like it. It's a really great documentary, and uh, even my wife was like, who I'm still trying to get her into liking racing, but uh, she was glued to it. She really enjoyed it. So for non-race fans, it's a great it's uh, a great documentary. It's called Senna. It's on Netflix. Uh, please check it out because we're going to talk about it in length next week for sure. F1 is, uh, of course, another series that has come under a lot of fire and has been hurt a ton by this COVID-19, air quotes, pandemic. Um What's the word on F1? What's going on with there? I, I mean, I, I read a story the other day. McLaren's going to drop a bunch of people. I mean, F, it seems like they're, you know, I don't think anybody's feeling bad for F1, but I guess the, I kind of do feel a little bit bad for them because I do love the race and I do love where they go, but, and I like the series-ish, but they're under, uh, they're under a lot of stress, aren't they, right now, Pops? Yeah, they're, they're, F1 is going crazy right now. Um uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a. I don't. I don't know what to say. I think. I think there. There's just too much going on. Not going on. I guess is the best way to explain it. They don't have anything to do. So they all they're doing is creating rumors. It's. 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 It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um. They. They uh, first said Mercedes said Toff is out. And then it comes back and says Toff is going to buy the team. So I mean, it, uh, if you remember that, that was the team. Uh, the Mercedes team that was bought from uh, Honda because the Honda team was falling apart. He bought the the, the thing from from the Honda uh, franchise. They created the the Mercedes team and then cleaned up and, and won everything. Yeah. Um, but now apparently Mercedes got a new new investors and they don't like Top and so 
they're, they're doing all kinds of crazy things. Now, <clears throat> Hamilton, the multi-time world champion, has got nothing better to do than say that uh, F1 is not talking about the, uh, the, the Floyd death in Minneapolis. And he's ashamed of F1. So it's like, oh, <laughs> come Jesus on, Christ, dude. Really? Come on. F1 doesn't need to jump down that rabbit hole. No, <laughs> they, have really? no they have no interest. In, there's nothing to do with them. It's not. It, Jesus. Oh, my God, people. God, well, can we please? Because F1 is all white. And, and, and oh, is it? Up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that because every you know every every time I was in, or seen Indianapolis or Circuit of Americas, I I definitely saw more diversity than I've seen in pretty much on any NASCAR race. So, yeah, oops. <laughs> it's it just they're doing because they don't have anything else to do. They they just sit there and yak at each other and and uh, and, and come up with crazy stories. Uh, the, the the story earlier this week was that R Renault was going to pull out of F1 uh, uh, because Renault was having all kind of cutbacks at, in their factories and so forth. And now Renault finally came back and said, no, we're just cutting back on set because we're not selling cars. Right. Uh, well, Renault's never going to so, pull out of F1. I mean, I mean, I mean, not say never, but Jesus, they've been in there from the get go. Like, yeah, and they're and they're a good supplier, and and they're they're making money on their supplying uh, the engines, so. Oh yeah, a ton of money. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no, not a ton of money. After after they lost Red Bull, they lost. Them. <laughs> oh, they did. That's you know, right. I forgot about that. Uh, uh, you know so, what? All I mean, these upper in the end, they had to they had to pay Red Bull to take their engines. Is really what it came down to. That Jesus. was that was ugly, but uh, that, that's that's racing, and it's gonna it goes it's a it's a pendulum. It goes back and forth. So uh, it, it will be interesting to see how the season turns out. Their, their uh, Williams team is up for sale. Um, <laughs> They, <laughs> that's just because. With, with the, uh, Wait, BMW Williams the is up for sale. Huh? BMW Williams is up for sale. Yep. Holy shit! For how much? I don't know. You can't afford it. Uh, oh, I fucking know that. <laughs> I can well, win well, lottery. Could, fuck you, money. I still couldn't afford the it. But that I was gonna ask. What's that? With that, with the team being uh, up for sale and all these upper end manufacturers that are in F one, could someone like Elon Musk come along and? Oh my god. Up? Put Tesla could, up against. Well, I mean, why buy into something that's not winning? You know, that, that that's the well because that's well, what that dude prove, does. Look what Haas has done. Yeah, you know, Haas, could, I can't believe Haas is still in it. To be honest with you, is he? Because because he could take his new Tesla cars and match them up against McLarens and smoke McL McLaren. Well, and they've stuff. already got Formula E, so they won't <laughs> let him do that. But I mean, I would love to see Elon go in there and, and just tear shit up. The guy's a force of personality, but yeah, I can't believe. Yeah, you you make a good point. I mean, Haas has been in uh, what is it three years so far? The yeah. return of American uh, an American team in F one, and we haven't even cracked the top ten in points, have we? No, I say Not we like I have a fucking involvement in it, but um. <laughs> well, no, I guess, I guess they're in the top ten in points. That's part of being a sports fan. There's only ten teams, so yeah. Well, yeah, but there's the there's the three, and then the best of the rest, right? Yeah. In F one, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that is I frustrating. I would love to see, but you know, God, will he put up the money that Ferrari, McLaren? Probably not. So well, unless I mean, you want, I mean, you look at, you look at what you have to involve, you know. Put up to get involved. Number one, you're going to spend 140 million, 145 million a year to run for two cars. Yeah, <laughs> to just run a team. That's not even R and D, right? Right. Well, oh, Jesus, that's all you're allowed to do R and D anywhere. Oh, that's okay. why you have to buy. You have to buy in to someone else's failed team. Is really what it comes out to because oh, okay. you can't afford to develop something unless you go ahead and spend all the money you want to developing it, and then say, "I want to go racing with you." Uh, I guess you could do that. Is that how he got in? Because Force India f failed, or or no? I um I think that was what he was it Force India that he I don't know how Haas got in, but he no he he created his his team from from scratch. Okay. Um, he, I mean he 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 used uh, Delara chassis. Delara provided the chassis. Uh, he got uh, 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 Ferrari to pr provide the engines. Um. And then they did their own development work to make those two things work together. But obviously, even though you got a Ferrari engine, you don't have a Ferrari chassis, and that's the combination that was winning. So uh, it's it, it, it's it's hard it's it's hard to get into something new. 
especially when they you spend against teams that are spending two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand, three hundred million a year. What I'm saying that. Right. Fortunately, now they they've dropped the uh, the limit from 175 million down to 145 million, and they're going to drop five million a year until they get down to 125 million. They say, mm. I just I I don't know. <laughs> Somebody send the email email to Elon Musk. Get him in an F one. I'm telling you, he'll change. He'll he'll mess some shit. Well, but see that the, the thing with Elon Musk that his he loses the U S government as his his financial partner. Sure. I'm, you look at the money he's got coming from the, the U.S. government for his cars and for his space. He, he's doing pretty good that way. Space sure. I don't think the U.S. government's going to back him in an F1 venture. Yeah, he's got it. He can, he can sell a few more houses and, and uh, sell some shares in PayPal. <laughs> sell some shares in PayPal. He'll be all right. He's got the money. You know? I mean, shit. Uh, um, all right. Well, no, it, I, I just... I just figured matching his vehicles up against other car manufacturers would be something that would be up his alley. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I mean, I think that would be something he would enjoy doing. It's just that it, it's just not. It's not some. He his whole idea is he's going to do do something and make money. And F one's not a place you go to make money. <laughs> this is, yeah, you got a good point there. Money. You got an excellent point there, Dad. That 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 is true. Like that is that is a. Well, I mean, isn't racing always been a, one a form of advertisement to a way to develop tech to translate it back to your domestic uh, auto production? Isn't it always what it's been? I mean, the curve system, traction control, uh, power. I mean, you, you name anything in F1 or IndyCar that has been a techno- technological advance. It always comes back into the domestic market, correct? Right? I mean, that's kind of the yeah. point. of well, That's one that, of the points that, of racing. One of them. For the manufacturers, at least, right? Well, it, that was the theory. But it, oh. the problem is is that racing has diver- diverged so far from practicality that, uh, that there is not the trade-off that it used to be. Okay. Um, it, it just, it's gone so far from the, the practical, well, I guess, what it comes down to. Uh, it, 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 especially in Formula One, <laughs> they, they they found a way to to to, to really mess up the uh, the transfer of the technology from their racing to uh, the street. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, you guys, give me a minute. I'm talking amongst myself. I'm trying to. Uh, I had somebody in here talk a little baseball with us. If you guys are cool with that. He's no, uh, I'm fine with that. He's my uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, let's see if he. I don't want to open. What the hell is going on here? Let's try this. No, no. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. <sighs> yeah, you guys got to talk about yourselves. I got I got <laughs> I got some shit I got to do. Apparently. So yeah, to get this guy on, I gotta I gotta do some stuff. All right, pop. So what's what's coming up? What's next weekend's? What's next week's race schedule look like? Uh, the, 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 I guess the cool thing is you got uh, the IndyCar race at, at uh, on in uh, Texas on Saturday night uh, on NBC. You got Wednesday is going to be the race at Martinsville, the NASCAR race at Martinsville. Uh, and then Sunday again, back down at Martin at Martinsville. So uh, you got a good busy busy week of racing. Uh, the trucks don't race again until they get down to uh, uh, I guess Talladega, and that's good in uh, three weeks. So uh, I, the truck race was fun to watch. The, tr- the truck race at um, just at Charlotte was was, was how do I say it? Charlotte is not a good track for for the trucks because the trucks are nowhere fast enough to make that track. Dangerous. <laughs> well, I should yeah. say dangerous. It, 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 they just have so much downforce, and they're they're so controllable. Uh, they're not nowhere near the way the uh, the Xfinity and the uh, Cup cars are. So the but the trucks, they got all the rookies in the trucks, and so you have to watch and see how they develop. Uh, yeah. Ty Majeski, I think Ty Majeski finished fourth or fifth at, at at Charlotte. And again, this is his first year uh, coming out of Wisconsin. So Ty's, <clears throat> Ty's looking good this year. Awesome. 
it's That's nice. It's nice to see that uh, the Wisconsin boys are finally doing right. Johnny Sauter had a good race, so uh, uh, that is that is fun to see when when the the Wisconsin boys finally get their acts together. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, last week we were talking before we went on the air that uh, Kyle Larson had won a World of Outlaws race. Uh, yeah. Uh, is he still is he still doing real well in oh, World yeah. of Outlaws since he's been he, he has out of the, NASCAR? He's one of the nation's best dirt track racers. Um, oh shit! Does really well, uh, and his, his his dirt track sponsors have stayed up. They didn't drop him like the uh, uh, the, the NASCAR uh, ones. Did. NASCAR Cup cars uh, sponsors dropped him. Um, um, all right, guys, keep talking. Point. I'm going to call this guy, and once he answers, uh going to have to dump you guys and then add you back into the call. Yeah, that's cool. We can handle that. All right. All right. We're, we're used to being dumped. Oh, <laughs> that's not fair. All right. <laughs> so you, do you think uh, Larson will have a path back to getting the NASCAR eventually? If he keeps he's got a path race? back, but he's waiting for a, he's waiting for a good opportunity. To be perfectly honest with you, um, he knows it was shit the way they, he he was handled, and uh, he's not he's not going to come back, and and uh, he's not going to do what Kurt Busch did to come back. Uh, Kurt Busch won at, had to pay his way back in. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, for I think for two years he he raced on his own money, which means he he he, he probably was investing three four million dollars a year just so he could race. Uh, yeah. Now, I mean he's he's doing well now. I mean he's back in in, in top grade uh, equipment, uh, and and uh, it'll it'll be fun. I mean he came back and 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 uh, end up getting hired by. Uh, Oh God, this is terrible. <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite drivers. Uh, anyway, that uh, hmm. the driver. This is terrible. The driver that went from IndyCar to NASCAR, um, and I, oh Tony Stewart. That's what Tony Stewart hired him and brought him. Oh in, yeah, because yeah, into yeah. NASCAR. I remember Tony Stewart having his own team. Yeah, and uh, and he raced for Tony Stewart a couple years, and then got and then uh, he got picked up. <laughs> this will crack up. He got picked up by Chip Ganassi. He's racing for Chip Ganassi now, which is where Kyle Larson got fired from. <laughs> <laughs> and now Matt Kenseth is driving Kyle Larson's car. So, <laughs> Mr. How this all gets interwoven in there. But uh, uh, Kyle it all is, comes is, full he, circle. Mr. Yeah. Thomas Bruckner, are you with us? Oh, sorry. I fell asleep during that conversation. Oh, here we go with the racing shit again. Give me a break. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? What's actually, going on, man? Actually, I will say this. I was never so excited to watch cars turn left recently when, when NASCAR started. <laughs> <laughs> it was something to never watch, right? I, yeah. Never have I actually sat down and watched an entire NASCAR race until then. That's awesome. Good for you, man. You're, 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 you're. We're getting, you, we're sucking you in slowly but surely. You know, we had to create a pandemic and well, no, a few and other I, things. I was but done. no, I was done because then it turned into the longest NASCAR race known to man, <laughs> and uh, five and a half, five and a half hours of zoom, zoom, zoom. <gasps> like, how do you do that for five and a half hours? <laughs> With uh, skill, determination, and a lot of money behind you. So, how you after been, man? Two hours, after, after two hours down the road, I got to get out and pee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, never, what, saw, that, that you never is, saw Dumb and Dumber? Just that, go, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. That, that is the number one question drivers get asked. What the hell you do if you got to pee? <laughs> You I'm just, guessing that you sweat so much out that you probably really don't have to. <laughs> no, no, you have to. <laughs> with those with those fire suits on and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would you, guess you you'd go. be losing a lot of liquid that way. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever notice that the trophy girls always hug with their backs hunched over, not up against, because the smell <laughs> is so bad? No. I, I, so I invited Tom. Oh, yeah, on. I don't think they'd smell good. I invited Thomas Bertner on because he was one of the founding members of Sports Church. He is one of the, the guys that knows 
it's probably ten times more about baseball than I do, and I know a lot, but I wanted to bring him on because this is weird, and I'm sure he is chomping at the bit as much as I am, if not more, about what's going on through this whole COVID-19 thing. So I want to ask him, what what do you think about this? They're, they're talking about going to an 82-game schedule. Uh, they're talking about going to, like, playing games in certain cities. And What are you hearing? What do you think so far about this whole thing? All right, I'll say this right off the bat. We are in serious jeopardy of having no baseball season. <laughs> The Baseball Players Association needs to pull their heads out of their asses and get the ball players in line. America does not want to hear millionaires whining that they're not going to get their full paychecks this year. Yeah, I get it. I get it. The owners make lots of money. You want your percentage. But the owners aren't making shit unless you play. Right. We get that. But you know what? We're not going to play a full season, so you're not going to get your full salary. Boo-hoo. File unemployment like everybody else. <laughs> What's sixty percent oh. of uh, five million dollars? Anybody know off the top of their head? <laughs> Who fucking cares? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You know. <laughs> do it, do it out of the kindness of your heart to get America going again. For the first time in like a hundred and some odd years, baseball was not played on Memorial Day. Yeah. And all I can think back to is the speech that James Earl Jones gives oh. in Field of Dreams, yes. where he says, baseball, Ray, baseball has stood the test of time. It's, you know, it's the thing that's always there, blah, blah, blah. And it's not. It's not there. For the first time since like 1840, 1868, 88, whatever the hell it was, there was no baseball on Memorial Day. Yeah. It's insane. Listen, yeah. it's, it, the season is not going to look like what a normal season would look like. We get it. But if the owners and the players can't come to an agreement to get this season going, and other sports do, baseball is going to be done for a while. Yeah, Baseball's not going to recover as quickly as it did from the 94 strike or – the 81 strike, it's not going to happen. It's going to take even longer because they're not, they're not going to have fan base to bring right back to the stadium because the stadiums aren't even open. You're relying on revenue from your streaming service or merchandise sales or network contracts which are chomping at the bit to get baseball back on, on TV. Absolutely, man. To generate some revenue for themselves. But if they screw the pooch on this, they're done for a while. I agree. Uh, and I think it's ridiculous. I think they got to bite the bullet on this. I know I read an article the other day. I actually pulled it up. It was uh, they're complaining that uh, the top-tier players are going to lose 60% of their salary this year. And I'm like, well, 60% of $25 million is still a lot of money. And you're not working. You're not earning that money, so why are you complaining about it? I don't understand that yeah. point. Look, this is baseball. <laughs> he says baseball. Well, this is this is America. This is baseball. We need baseball. I need baseball. I know Tom needs baseball. And a lot of us, we need the game. We need it back. And I don't and even t- when it does even when it does come back, a lot of that revenue is not going to be there too because a lot of these teams make a lot a lot of their money selling tickets to. Well, you know, they, what, 160, there's 162 games a year, so half of that. Well, what is I that? think, I think the only way that baseball survives over this season and probably the next season is going to have to be a complete restructuring, where there's revenue sharing throughout the entire league. Yeah, because Yankees might recover, but the Kansas City Royals, yeah, or the Minnesota Twins, yeah, you know, they're going to fall apart. Yeah, absolutely, you look especially with new A's. stadiums. The oh, Oakland Jesus. A's. The Oakland A's, who are already sell off their team every year because they can't freaking afford it, right? have already furloughed every single uh, player in their farm system, furloughed half their front office already. They cannot survive. There will be teams that are either forced to sell off their top talent, 
restart completely or sell the team. Right. Well, or or, or move. Crazy. Or move. Or move. I mean, what do you or think? Move. I heard a, heard a I rumor. I heard a rumor, Tom, about yeah. Oakland possibly being, instead of Vegas getting an expansion team, that Oakland would move to Vegas. That makes more sense. It does, and doesn't it? Actually, actually it throw more fuel to that fire. I just uh, I just heard this week about uh, the city of Oakland and the A's aren't exactly getting along right now because uh, the city of Oakland set up a uh, COVID recovery center inside the Oakland Col- Coliseum so the A's couldn't use the facility at all to have workouts or anything, so they stopped paying on the Coliseum during the time that they were – basically kicked out of there for the COVID recovery center. Wow. Yeah, I heard, I well, heard that. And, I, had, and, and be honest with you, I can understand missed, why they would do it. Yeah. yeah they are you going to pay for the Coliseum if you're not able to use it? I mean, it, it, yeah, they missed They didn't pay the $1.8 million that they would have normally paid. But yeah. at the same time, but at the same time, I guarantee you, Oakland doesn't even have the money to pay them. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Let me ask you a funny uh, off the wall question. I'm sure you saw this tweet, and you got to send me that invite to that baseball discussion group again because I freaking lost it, Tom. And I'm sorry because uh, I know it's something I probably would really enjoy. But I saw a tweet the other day. Well, it was actually uh-huh. uh, the other day, the other day. But it was uh, from the guy that we rented from you, from your team, uh, to win a World Series. Um, and he, <laughs> it was a re, it was a reply to a tweet from Jose Atuve about the start of the MLB season. And Aroles Chapman retweeted. He says, "Oh, don't worry about it. I've been practicing in the backyard with my 100, 101 mile an hour fastball on a scarecrow. Now it's a little taller, but I'll adjust for fire." What'd you think about that? <laughs> well, there there was also a little microbrewery in Texas. Not Texas. Was was it Texas? might have been Texas, that uh, they did a, a Houston-based uh, microbrew, bang the drum slowly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I think we talked about it before, but what do you think about this, man? Like, you know, we've argued about this, and I've argued with Pops about this. Like, I have no problem with – I mean, I remember it literally – being you know, taught how to steal signs, but Jesus, this was institutionalized. This was through their organization. Right. I mean, it, it, it was the, the sign. The sign thing was just too well organized. I mean, it was from the top down, right, from the bottom up. Um, well, that, that, that's know, the thing. Who you get mad at? The people you get mad at are the people that run the league. I mean, I just can't believe the baseball didn't do what they they should have done with the team. The more and more, you know, it's funny. I get into these conversations all the time as to who belongs in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even this Veterans Committee stuff, I think that the the Baseball Hall of Fame is getting a bit watered down, Mm -hmm. right? And and then we always get into these conversations about the steroid era, the, the juiced ball era, the uh, versus the dead ball era. And then, you know, then you think back, well, look at all the crap that people were taking in the the fifties and sixties that would have never been tested anyway, like amphetamines. Oh, greenies. Yeah. Greenies. Yeah. Yeah. Greenies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it, it, it's very hard to, to look at like the hall of fame or uh, cheating scandals and all this other stuff, because every different era has handled it differently, you know, whereas like you look at a Pete Rose where he cheats, he gets banned for life. Uh, a whole team cheats, the Chicago black Sox, they're all banned for life. Um, but well, then Pete got, Rose was gambling, right? If- yeah. Is he necessarily cheating? <laughs> well, no, he, he was gambling. Well, don't get your yeah, point. He was gam- I'm here. saying he was gambling. I I, I just, yeah, cheating, I think his batting stats are still legit. Yeah, but, you think his but, batting but, stats are legit? Baseball's always had this deal with, with uh, gambling since the, know, the Black Sox. 
I've, I've, I have always been a proponent of Pete Rose being in the Hall of Fame. Yep. And We've argued over but I've that. Done, <laughs> but I've done some research lately. I've done some research lately, and I'll be honest with you. This group that I belong to actually has some major league ball players in it, and we've talked. And it didn't even register to me because, you know, I, I, the, the last couple of seasons that Rose played, I was young and, you know, you're just excited to see the, the record break and everything sure. in 86 the way it did in the nine yards. And you think that his career was extended because he was a player coach and he can play himself or put him up at bat whenever he wanted. And he only put himself up at bat when he knew that he could get a hit against the pitcher that was pitching. But he knew, I mean, because you knew, I mean, Jesus Christ, even if you're good, even if you're Ted Williams, you're still doing what? 300? Well, no, you, when you look, when you, when you look at a pitch and you say, okay, I'll put myself in because I have a, uh, a, a 450 lifetime batting average against this. Okay. Pitcher. Yeah. I got your point there. Yeah. Okay. I got you. It's fair enough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, yeah, I get you. Yeah, so he, he did, but he still hit him. He still hit him. He still so hit he him. He still hit him, absolutely. But then, and I never knew this, because you don't think about this when you're a kid. And, you know, when you're not paying attention to certain things. And, and a re- report recently came out. I had no idea that he corked his bats. And he corked his bats for almost 20, 20 years of his playing career. See, I don't. And that, I don't know. And no, no, no. But but let me let me finish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Please. And, and the question. So this original investigation was they sent in a bat, and they examined it, and it showed that it was cork. And they said, "All right, well, maybe it's just this one bat." Well, they pulled bats from the Hall of Fame that he donated to the Hall of Fame. They were X-rayed, and those were corked as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard this. <laughs> no, nah, I haven't either. I have to look this up. I mean, I'll it, trust you on, on point. This, but... was a, this was originally brought to light by a facilities guy that uh, when he played for the Expos. And, of course, you know, nobody pays attention to it at first, and then an investigation happens, and then, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a media outlet that did the initial investigation, and then it caught some attention. And then they went to the Hall of Fame and they examined those bats. And so, how legitimate was Pete Rose's? <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing: I don't understand. <laughs> but, but cork bat, anyways. What, I don't understand but, cork bat in anyways. But right, right. But if that's what everybody was doing anyway, <laughs> like, is it a level playing field? I guess or? it was. I mean, Jesus, everybody was cheating. I mean, everybody was trying to cheat. I mean, you think he was the first guy to cork a bat? No. I mean, uh, Christ. Of I mean, course not. And you, you still, know, I mean, I got. Still have, have, Sammy you still Sosa. have to have. You still have the eye have the eye hand coordination at the plate. You still have to have the swing. You still have to have. I mean, everything. Yes, you know? it's the most difficult thing to do in sports. But, but if you're going to defend Pete Rose in that manner, how do you not defend Barry Bonds then? Oh, I've never not defended him. I, I, I I've uh, always, I've always, I was, I've always been a proponent of Pete Rose on the gambling issue, not knowing about the cork bat issue. But I've never yeah, I believed don't really that. I about the cork bat thing. I, I do about the gambling. That's what I always figured right. he was held for the and, hall and of I, fame. And I never, I never was a proponent of putting Barry Bonds in the hall of fame because I figured, well, yeah, he had great eye hand coordination. <laughs> Uh, he always hit for average, but would he have hit for average if he was always being pitched to and not walked 196 times a year? Um, who knows? Yeah. But yeah, anybody can put the bat on the ball. No, I don't. Don't say anybody. It's, it's, but, <laughs> well, no, no, true. Bob Uecker couldn't. But, <laughs> yeah, um, but he can announce. <laughs> Great he can announcer. announce. <laughs> yeah. Just a bit outside. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I live in the Milwaukee market, so I listen to him. He he can put the bat on the ball, great. But it's the roids that makes the ball go that extra. I don't think it gets it over the fence. I don't think it does. What I think it does is I think it takes Barry from 60 home runs to 73. 
That's what it does. It allows you to recover. Okay. It allows you to keep your, right. your stamina allows, up. It, it gives right. you an edge, but it doesn't make the baseball fly any further or harder. It just allows you to not die at the end of the season. You know, there's a big thing in the UFC right. not long it, ago it with that, testosterone replacement. Stamina. Yes, exactly. Like, right. look, it I gives, got... It gives you the stamina. Well, not necessarily the stamina, but it gives you the ability to recover from yes. minor injuries quicker that, that allows you to play yeah, more Yeah, that games wear and tear, you know. And there's a lot of things in the baseball. Like, like I got <laughs> I got a home run taken away from me in, in semi-pro uh, at the state tournament in Indiana because I hit a home run. And I'm very proud of this. I broke the same window that uh, Kenny Lofton did at Calumet High School. Um, but they took it away from me because I was using a minus five bat. Do you know what that is? Anybody? Anybody? No. All right, so 32, no 32, 32, 32 inches, 27 ounces. So they right. deemed that illegal at that time. I didn't know. I had the bat for two Why? years. <laughs> I, well, because it was Why would that be illegal? too much exit velocity. That's what they. That's what they said. That it was going to hurt pitchers if I, you know, you hit a you hit a belt a belt hang curve roll belt fastball and you drill it right back at the pitcher. That makes that much more of a difference, I guess. And it's unfair advantage. And I'm like, well, if everybody has a minus five bat, it doesn't really fucking matter. But they uh, <laughs> they uh, overruled me and I pushed an umpire and I got um, ejected from the field. The game and the field for the rest of the tournament. So that was that was fun. But yeah, I right. mean, I wasn't trying to cheat. I was just using my bat. I'd use the whole time. Rapid, rapid fire question. Sure. Each of you, give me one player who does not belong in the Hall of Fame. That's in. Mm, God. Oh. Whew. That's tough. I can think of some guys that need to be in, but aren't. But um. I I don't have a good answer for you. Rapid fire. I, I, I guess the bus is going to go below fifty five miles an hour. It's going to blow up, man. I don't know. <laughs> what do you What uh, do you got for me? I don't know. I'll tell you later. Oh, <laughs> you can't do that to me. <laughs> what does Pop say? I haven't got the slightest clue there. Oh, geez, you're the biggest. Oh, you oh you're a big red machine fan. You're the Cincinnati boy. You got all kind uh I don't know. I mean there's uh, to am, me, Yeah. To me, Harold Baines has no business being in the Hall of Fame. Okay. I might go with that. Let me look him up real quick. But Yeah, I was just I'm just trying to look up some uh some of the most recent inductees to try and see. That was one of the names that was sticking out to me, but so, hey, uh, lifetime batting average, 289, 384 home runs, 2,866 hits. Yeah, no. No. Why is he in the Hall of Fame again? Good call. Good call. Because it was put in, he was put in by the Veteran Committee. Oh, all right. So, let me throw you at this. Let me throw you this. Yeah. What about Ron Santo? What about him? The veteran committee passed on him three times, which I think is the limit. Okay. Um, okay. And, and he is, without question, a Covey favorite. Um, okay. Do you think he belonged in? Let's see. No. Batting average 277, his 2,200. Two, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Batting average of, batting two, average of what? 277. <laughs> 342 home runs, 1,330. No, no. No, he doesn't get in. He doesn't get in. I love him. I mean, but... listen, I'm a diehard. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Oh, well, yes, yes. And and there's a there's God bless you for that. Year, there's a, <laughs> uh, uh, every year there's a there's the few Yankees that everybody says needs to be in there. Don mm-hmm. Mattingly. Mm-mm. I loved Don Mattingly as a kid. Loved Don Mattingly. He was the Don only Mattingly's Yankee to watch game. when you were a kid. No, that's not true. Well, okay, there was a couple more, but let's be honest. He was I, I one was of the at, marquee guys. Was at, I, he was one of, but you were talking about a team that also had Dave Winfield, Greg Nettles, Rich Gossage, Ricky Henderson. I mean, other guys that went to the Hall of Fame, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, but Ricky got there after Oakland, so I mean, he had already set his precedent, right? 
Doesn't matter. I mean, Ricky was there in 85, 86, 87, 88. Yeah. Actually, I think he was there in 84, too. No, I think he got there in... Did he get there? No, I think he got there in 84. I think you're right. But, um, needless to say, I mean, Mattingly, during, from 84, 85, 86, 87, Mattingly had a career that would have rivaled anybody in baseball at the time. Mm -hmm. But then the back injuries came. And you can be shit hot for four or five years, but that's not Hall of Fame worthy. No. Right? No. Greg no. Nettles. I loved, Gre I loved Greg Nettles as a kid. Ah. One of the best defensive third base. Actually, in my opinion, because I didn't get to see Brooks Robinson. So to me, Nettles was the best defensive third baseman I've ever seen in my life. And he had a couple of, he had a few seasons where he was great. And he may still hold the the home run record for American League third baseman, right? But he's not Hall of Fame worthy. No. I think he finished with a two forty eight lifetime average, three hundred and ninety three home runs, whatever the case may be. Um, and and even when Nettles retired, which he probably had his best chance of getting into Hall of Fame, when he retired with three hundred ninety three home runs, he was like. Ninth on the the all time home run list. Yeah, that's up um, there. So that's that's worth worth consideration, right? Though. True, but there are so many people you look at that you think back when you were a kid of, oh my god, I love that guy. But when you look at the totality of their careers, and in some cases how short they were, and the numbers they put up. They're not worthy. The Dale Murphys. Oh, uh, yeah. The Don Mattingly's. I mean, all for a while had short bursts of greatness, but couldn't sustain it for one reason or another. Yeah. But this is where the Hall of Fame has no consistency. There are people like Thurman Munson, who the only <laughs> reason... No, no, seriously. The only reason he didn't put up better numbers is because he died in a plane crash, right? Right. And well, people say, well, well, and people say all the time, well, you don't know what his other numbers would have been, so you can't take it. All right, well, they put Kirby Puckett in, even though he had a very short career. He did. Because of his eye injury, right? But they put him in, and they projected what his numbers would have been. Sandy Koufax, great pitcher, but you realize he only pitched nine years? Yeah. Yeah, and sat out a World Series game because it was on the Sabbath. <laughs> he did. He only pitched nine years. He only pitched nine years, and then his career was over. Yeah. He had great numbers in those nine years. But, he well, I mean, what, what, what is your definition to it? I mean, because, I mean, Jesus, Sandy Colfax, but Jesus, that, he was he was amazing. He was lights out in those nine years. Lights the fuck out. Like, lights out. Yeah, like, but. Right, but his career, these are his career numbers. 206, no, excuse me, 165 wins. Mm -hmm. It's 165 wins. I think he has like 2,500 strikeouts. Yes, he won the, the pitching triple crown two, two years, was one World Series, the whole nine yards. I get that. But how do you justify putting someone with numbers like that in just because he had a shortened career because of, uh, I don't know, if, I can't even remember his injury or what it was that ended Sandy Koufax's career, but how do you project numbers for one person but then not another? It's like from era to era, the Baseball Writers Association <laughs> had different criteria. Sure, yeah. Well, culture changes, you know. Uh, culture changes the the views on how what matters changes. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I get your point. I totally get your point. There's some people that don't belong in there. I think there's some people that should be in there. Unfortunately, Jesus Christ, I can't think of one. I mean, the first one I came up with was Ron Santo. And then I looked up his numbers again. I'm like, yeah, I guess not. Maybe. You know, I mean, you know, I I loved mm -hmm. Ronnie Santo, and everybody did love his jumping on jumping on a, a Cubs win with his heels clicking in the air. But uh, yeah, did he earn? They earn it? No, no, not really. I guess. But 
can you really, I mean, can you really stop a guy who's had a 8, 10, 12-year career that got cut short, who had amazing numbers the entire time, stop from being in the Hall of Fame? I mean, is it long? Because what I think you're looking at is longevity, and I don't think that's what necessarily should get you in the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> right. And, but then there's other people who had long, long careers and did amazing things, but they're still not enough, good enough pe- for other people. Give me a I couple had names. Arguments before with, Give me a couple names. I have, I've, I had an argument recently with a guy who said that Nolan Ryan is the most overrated baseball player in the history oh, of baseball. Oh well, you should what? punch him in the no. face. <laughs> you need to punch him in the face. And I and and I said, all right. I said, I- I'll bite. I told the guy, I'll bite. Give me your reasons. Well, he never won a Cy Young. And I had to stop and think for a second. I said, all right, all right. Nolan Ryan never won a Cy Young. Got True. it. Okay, what else? Well, he only had like 20 more wins than losses in his career. Okay. All right. Isn't let's the think name. Now. Let's think now. Let's think, though. He played with the shittiest teams in baseball. <laughs> yes. The, the Houston Astros. Right. Yeah. The Texas right. Rangers. He's one, I think he's one. <laughs> And then, I, and so I said back to him, I said, "All right, let's put this into perspective. He played with the Mets for like two seasons. <laughs> uh, he played with the California Angels, the Houston Astros, and the Rangers. Yep. Right? Those were his teams. Um. All right. He, so he, he, I think the Angels. I think out of those all those seasons, I think only four seasons." Did his, those teams did really well. He had the one season in 86 where he went to the NLCS with the Astros. He had a couple of winning seasons. The Angels had a couple of winning seasons in the 70s. And then, of course, he had the 69 Mets, right? Yep. Other than that, he was the star of those teams. Um, he's one of, I think, only two pitchers that have more strikeouts than innings pitched. <laughs> He also pitched over 240. I want you. I want you to really understand this. He pitched over 240 complete games. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Nobody over does that 60, anymore. Over Nobody even does com- one complete over game six, anymore. Right, over 60 complete game shutouts. Jesus. Yeah. Seven no hitters. Yeah, seven no hitters. That's all I was waiting for you to say. Over, yeah, over five, over five thousand seven hundred and some odd strikeouts. These are records that will never be broken because the game is not played that way anymore. Right. And besides, the ball was corked. <laughs> no, <laughs> Jesus, yeah. I mean, like, but uh, look, you know. Let me switch gears a little bit. I want to ask your opinion on this because I got you, Tom. Uh, just. So, I don't know, 25 days, three weeks ago was the anniversary of, do you know what I'm thinking about? It's a Cub anniversary. Do you know? How many weeks ago? It was uh, three weeks ago and 20 years. So, 20 <laughs> years ago? What year What year would that be? That would be... 2000? Uh, 2000? It's 2020, so it's 2000. No. Yeah, it's yeah. 2000. It was Kerry Wood and a 20 game strikeout. Oh, and his. And, all right, so he matched. Didn't he match Roger Clemens's? Yes, he matched the major league record at that time. Yeah, against probably right. one of the most nasty lineups that a lot of people have ever seen. What was funny is he walked into that with like. <laughs> he was a young kid, he was 20 years old. Yeah, and he walked in with like, like almost even... a six plus ERA, and he came in there and struck yeah, out that, twenty guys. Right, that was one of those. That was one of those games where they like went into it towards the end of the game because they didn't even bolt, like, were like, "What the hell's going on over here?" Yeah, you know? yeah. Everybody started broadcasting it because it was it was it was amazing. And Carrywood belong in the Hall of Fame? Hell no, he doesn't. Dude was hurt more than oh, God. He was hurt every year he played did, basically. Where did Kerry Wood wind up after that? He he came he left baseball, came back to the Cubs, no. and then left again. Yeah, yeah, and then he went to the Yankees. Did he go for a little bit? I didn't remember that. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. how'd that work out for him? 
Not very well. Didn't no, work I didn't well think for the so. Yankees either. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he was still too hurt. I don't remember him playing for the Yankees at all. I don't remember him either, hey, but I there trust are, there I trust are a in lot time. Of as as a diehard fan of the Yankees <sighs> who grew up in the Steinbrenner era. Yeah. Yankees put a lot of guys in uniform that people go, he was a Yankee? They <laughs> threw money at so many people. Like a lot of people don't even remember Randy Johnson was a Yankee. No, I do. A lot of people don't remember that Kenny Rogers was a Yankee. A lot of people, like I said, Kenny Wood, uh, uh, Kerry Wood was a Yankee. Um, there are so many people over the years that people for Rick Russell was a Yankee. Uh, people forget that Phil Lyle Nico got Overbay. a win. What's that? Lyle Overbay. Yeah. Jesus. So... So many. I already know who so he many, is because he played on the Brewers for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but the Yankees, yeah, every year in and year out, the Yankees would throw money at people. Uh, Cecil Fielder, oh god, Jose Canseco, yeah, Ruben Sierra. Um, I mean, they, that was yeah, Jose Canseco. That's a big name. I don't remember <laughs> from the uh, Yankees. I just remember his yeah. A's days. <laughs> No, he he was actually on a World Series winning Yankee team. He got a ring. I'm pretty sure he has a ring from one of those late '90s teams. Wow, that's crazy. Now, now he uses it as his bait to try and lure Bigfoot out. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? I think it was like last year. Jose Canseco had a. Uh, you could buy. A bigfoot, a bigfoot in alien hunting excursion with Jose Canseco online. <laughs> he was selling it on his website. He was going to take you out bigfoot hunting with him. Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right, back to Good baseball. Um, <laughs> what are we going to do, man? I mean, what, what do you think is going to be if we get this going? We get this going. We get an eighty-two game season. What do you think it's going to be like? Because you know, we've we've all seen the you know. The teams start real hot and fade away. The small market teams especially start real hot and they fade away. So now what do you think about this 82-game schedule? Like, is this going to be crazy? Major League Baseball better get their their act together because I'm starting to watch Korean baseball. Are you? Where do you watch that, by the way? ESPN, I think, ESPN has it. Does it? Oh, well, shit. I got to get ESPN. All right. Done. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I miss baseball. My favorite thing, and Tom, I'm, 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 I'm sure you're like a psycho baseball fan like me. Uh, T and, and Pops are not quite on our level, but my favorite thing with my son uh, last season, and he, of course he was just a little, little shit, but his favorite thing was to sit next to me in the corner of the couch and watch baseball with me, and he loved it. And he, uh-huh. I cra- I clapped. I got excited. He raised his hands. He clapped. He get excited. He look at me and hug me. And he's, he loves baseball. I don't, I, think, I don't know if he loves baseball. I think he loves that I love baseball, and, I, and I'm enjoying it. But it's a, it was a very cool thing for us, and and I'm running out of YouTube videos to watch with him. <laughs> We've watched the entire 2016 Cubs run to the world series and he's all about it but i i played the check out check out fox sports one on saturdays i think for like two hours straight every saturday morning they play old episodes of this week in baseball at Mel. oh god i missed twib oh, that would be awesome <laughs> i missed twib so much that was great my favorite episode of twib was when they were doing episodes was when they had jen finch you know who she is right that uh, mm-hmm. Olympic Olympic uh, uh, softball player, and she would go around yeah. stadium to stadium and fast pitch to Major League Baseball players. Only guy uh-huh. who took her deep, you know who who it was? Uh, Cecil Fielder. No, nope. Barry Bonds. Jose Canseco. It was Barry Bonds. Only guy who took her deep, <laughs> Barry Bonds. He okay. just he crushed her, and she was like, eh. you know. But she had struck out like I don't know how many guys. In that season before that, it was it was great. I missed Twib. That was that was like a part of us growing up, Americana. And for my dad, oh, it was it was home run derby. I mean, my dad remember, made me <laughs> literally watch VHS tapes hey, of home run if, derby. If baseball if baseball wants to do something to keep their fan base, do a home run derby show. 
They yeah. do. They absolutely should do that. They do. I, I'm not going to bet on it this year because last year I lost my ass. But um, it yeah, was. I'm saying every week right now. All right. I said this weeks before NASCAR came back on. I said NASCAR needs to get back on the air. They could really capture a fan, uh, add to their fan base because it's one guy in a car driving around. Nobody's worried about Corona. One guy in a car. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the the pit crew can still social distance. You know. So NASCAR a few weeks later gets back on 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 the air. Great. If baseball <gasps> wants to keep their fan base. Enough with these fantasy bracket bullshit things that you see all over Facebook yeah. and everywhere else. So Put annoying. Some real players on live TV, like the charity thing that they did for the golf with Tiger yeah. and Peyton and Brady and all Boy, that. And that get thing them was start ratings, doing unbelievable ratings that that was. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Get get them to start doing some home run derby type yeah, stuff. Yeah, get some guys we talking only have to shit. Throw a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah get, get some guys talking shit. Throw get... just a few, or you just have to put a few guys in the stadium, no fans, and have a home run derby. Yeah, and I think it'll be great. You you get some, you get some, you get some AL players, some NL players. You get a a, a NL batter, AL batter. They pick their own. Uh, mm-hmm. Their the, the guys are gonna throw it to them, and you pay per view that shit and make it cheap. Or just do it free, whatever. Put out MLB dot com or whatever, and have you know? Um, oh God, who was the guy who really surprised me in Homer Derby last year? He was uh, the son of uh, Vladimir Guerrero. What was his name? Uh, Jesus, uh, can't remember. Anyways, have those guys. You mean yeah. Vladimir Guerrero Jr.? Okay, there you go. I, I thought it was <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's Jesus, I was, I was like, thinking oh, he yeah, named you, him something you, else. <laughs> you know what was popping in my head was Tatis. Tatis was popping in my head. I'm sorry, it, 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 it happens. But you know things like that, like, like have matches, make ra- make some rivalries, make some fun, make some ha- have some shit going on. Like Jesus, put some base something baseball on. Home run derby would be great. Take the pay per view money, take the regular uh, TV money, and put it. And donate to the uh, workers who work at the stadiums who are getting paid. Do some shit like that. That'd be great. Talk shit. Go heal. You know, go WWE and talk shit about, oh, I want to beat this guy and I'm going to smoke this guy. I'm going to hit so many more home runs than him. And just have, just go with it. But they're not doing that. Why are they not doing that? We're hey, let's crazy. Let's up home run derby. Put a runner on first base <laughs> and, and the catcher gets money if he throws the runner out at second. So the pitcher's got to throw it nice so the, the hitter can, can can swing and knock the ball out. But the catcher has got to catch the ball and get it to second base to throw the runner out. So you, you're you taking the guys that can run, the guys that can throw. It, it, it just something different. I like that. I like that. But he only gets one step, though. He only gets one <laughs> step. He only gets one step from the base. Oh, no, because he, he, the more he can get, the more he, I mean, he can. the pitcher can throw him out. The pitcher can throw, make a throw back to first. Well, so you long, see who, how good the pitcher is. As long as it's not John Lester, yeah. <laughs> My Cubs pitcher. Oh, God. That is just the most embarrassing thing in the world. <laughs> Tom, I played with a guy in semi-pro that was the best at this I've ever seen. You know how he practiced it? He sat on the mound on a, on a school chair. Uh-huh. And just had a bag of balls next to him and would just take the balls and just throw them to first base. He was a left-hander, so they're already cheating, those fucking (laughs) left-handers. But he would just do that and do that again. And every time he started, he would get – if he got – if he walked a guy, he didn't give a shit about walking a guy because he would literally pick guys off that weren't even really trying to steal. It was amazing. Of course, because they cheat because they're lefties, but – they do, but you know I love them, which is why James is going to throw left-handed. But anyways, um... <laughs> oh no! By the way, congratulations to your son Tom for graduating high school. I'm sure you're very proud of that. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Hey, uh, Appreciate that. Hey, uh, Mitty, is the uh, bear going on? Because we got like four minutes. If yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is George, George, doing a thing tonight? No, he is not. But uh, okay. 
Not that I know of, but uh, we'll we'll wrap it up here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, congratulations to you, Tom. What else are we, we going to talk about baseball, man? What what else do you think is going to happen here in the next few months, if if anything? Well, so I know that I just read a story that the governor of New York signed a an agreement that the Yankees and the Mets can start spring training at like city field and Yankee stadium and stuff. And they're pushing for a July start to baseball, but the, the baseball players association, the owners have to come to an agreement. If there's, if they don't come to an agreement soon, we're not going to have a baseball season. Um, if you can't have it la- at least half the season, uh, I don't know. And, 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 and I haven't seen anything new on how they're going to do this season either. Other than I know they were talking about splitting it up into like three, only the West coast teams, no matter whether you're national league or American league would play each other and the central would play each other. And those right. on the East coast would play each other. So they had less traveling and all this other stuff, but it, it, it'll be interesting if they actually get it going. So you're going to take the Yankees, if we go to 80, 82 game schedule and take the Yankees and go to the World Series, can I, can I coach you on that? No, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, these, these, players, these, players have had, these players have had such downtime. You guys are I mean, stacked. Hey, listen, Stop I'm, it. You are stacked. I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm, not a kid, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a little more realistic. I know. But, uh, um, you know... I don't know how how much these guys have stayed in shape over this time. I mean, I've seen Aroldis Chapman. He's putting videos out all the time and some of these other guys. But, you know. Are any of the videos of his fa- scarecrow? Unless, no. I've seen the – I mean, <laughs> what, what scares me for a lot of these players is that no matter how much practice you're doing, there's a big difference between hitting off a machine or somebody oh. else is just throwing batting practice to you and stuff than facing a hundred mile an hour fastball yes. and your and your timing and your eye hand coordination and your bat speed and all this other stuff and I mean, I don't know. Oh, I I tell you, like I thought I was a beast and I went down to Louisville to do the Louisville uh uh slugger uh factory tour. And they at that uh-huh. time they had Cliff Lee. Uh, throwing simulated batting practice against you, and they actually threw a ball at you. And I was very proud of the fact that I could crush lefties. <laughs> I hadn't played in like three years, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> it didn't work out well for me. I hit one out of ten. <laughs> I hit the one solid. I crushed it. I mean, I demolished it, but it was one out of ten. So not exactly a... <laughs> Something to brag about, right? Like, I whipped on the yeah. other nine, like, bad. Like, I was either late or early. I, I just couldn't get my timing right. And I hadn't seen anything like that in a couple of years. So, of course, you know, it was terrible. So, I get your point. And I, Tom, I brought this up earlier in the show. I was going to make a bet with, with my good friend, Pook, who's one of our, our – he's our UFC guy on uh, Sports Church. And I said, how many – what do you think the over under it is when baseball starts again for hammies being blown out in the first week? I said 15. I think there's got a lot of guys that are just going to get hurt real fast. Again, it all depends on how, much, how, how good a shape these guys are when they start. If they're right. continuing – I mean, they all have money. They, can, they all have personal trainers. Um, they all have their workouts and stuff like that. If they're continuing to, to stay in shape, then I think we're in a better position. And let's be honest, we're not starting at the end of March, beginning of April when it's cold. It's going to be warm. True, that and, you helps. Know, they're going to be um, – so that'll help. But, you know, somebody also made the argument too recently, like, oh, I feel ba- so bad for these guys. They're uh, They could miss a whole season out of their stats, and it's going to affect their – their careers and their career stats and everything. I said, listen, what about the Ted Williams and the Joe DiMaggio's and the Yogi Berra's and everybody else who went off to world wars yeah. during their career and lost multiple seasons of their career and still went on to have hall of fame careers Yeah, and yeah. still have records to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Even Ted Williams went out better than anybody last at bat. what did he do? Yeah. Hit a home run <laughs> like a boss. Yeah. 
fought in two different wars, you know, and and John Glenn of all people, who was a uh, saber pilot, said that he was the lead. He was senior, but he always let Ted actually take lead because his vision was so much better. Yeah, the only one that I think truly hurts by missing a full season would be Mike Trout. Oh yeah, because because Mike because Mike Trout was on pace to break just about every record there is in baseball. Yeah, yeah. He is a freak that, unfortunately, not a lot of people now, don't know now about. He, now, here's here's an interesting question. Because he plays with the Angels and will play his entire career with the Angels unless he's traded for some reason, he may never win a World Series. Yeah. And if he has the stats that is better than anybody else in baseball at the end of his career, but has never won a World Series, is he the greatest of all time? Yes. <laughs> Even without winning a World Series? Yep. Because baseball is okay. baseball is a individual sport masquerading as a team sport. And well, so your individual that, accomplishments but that's, but mean that's, are that's, huge. That's the arc that's that's the argument that the baseball players writers association makes when certain people don't make the hall of fame, even though they have good numbers is that they never won a world series. Well, then me and you go to convention, beat the brakes off of them. I don't know. I mean, like, yes, Mike Trout is amazing. That dude is a freak, a freak, a freak, a five tool, a true five tool player. He really is. And those are very, very few. Some, some people like to give it to, to people who don't deserve it, but Mike Trout definitely deserved the arm, the range, the defensive capability he has, the batting average, the home run, the power. The every, he's just, he's got it all, man. And you know what it is? I think the one thing that hurts him is he's just a fucking nice guy, man. <laughs> he just likes to be low key and he, he's not very outgoing. He's not this, you know, extroverted person. So he doesn't. Even being in L.A., he doesn't attract a lot of attention, which is... All right, but who who else had all of that? Mm. Well... And Murphy Jr. Yes, absolutely. And he's not he, and he's not considered the greatest ball player of all time. Oh, he's definitely one of the greatest left-handed batters of all time. I, I'll give you yeah, that. He was the first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, he was. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Uh... Uh, I, I, but, I actually... you know, but here, here's a, here's another thing. They make so much. They make such a big deal these days about unanimous and first ballot Hall of Famers and all of this. Mariano Rivera, uh, well, unanimous. Oh, Jeter, Jeter. One person didn't vote for Jeter. He wasn't unanimous. Babe Ruth wasn't even a unanimous choice for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you vote against well him, but Mariano. Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah. Oh. That cutter, Ugh. oh, <laughs> nasty, nasty. Yeah, but right and, and nasty cutter, and most saves in in history and all of that. But by the time he started as a reliever, when he made the jump from a starter to a reliever, the the game was played much differently. Yes. You look at the seventies and the eighties where the Rich Gossages, the Bruce Suiters, and the Raleigh Fingers, they pitched a minimum of three innings to get a save. Yes. Yeah, that was a yeah. Mariano Mariano Rivera, Rivera would come in and pitch to one batter. Yeah. True. Is Mariano? Is Trevor? What do you think about Trevor Hoffman? Yeah, Trevor Hoffman. Trevor Hoffman was underrated. I mean, he has the second most saves in history. But look well, at the he teams he the played most, for. A little bit. Let Sandy go. Yeah, fucking he was the most for a little bit. That was the only World but, Series yeah, I mean, I've ever seen. I got uh, I got to go to games three and four in San Diego because uh, I was dating uh, a little rich girl, and uh, her daddy had her law firm had a box there, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was brutal. But uh, Jesus, I don't think anybody's had a better changeup in the history of baseball. Yeah, than Trevor. Yeah, Hoffman. he's yeah, he spent his whole career with the Padres, and then the end of it with the Brewers for like two or three years. But he's in the Hall of Fame, right? That's a great question. I don't know if he is or not. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Uh, 
What year did he go in? I was looking up. Uh, I think 2018. I, I think it was 2018, 2017. He got in the Hall of Fame. I think I think oh, he had yep. the 2018. Yep, most yeah. devastating changeup I've ever seen in my entire life, and I've watched a lot of baseball. My dad made me watch a lot of old old baseball. To his credit, no. thank you for that. But that was the most devastating changeup I've ever seen, ever, ever. He he didn't he didn't make the Hall of Fame until his third ballot, and he didn't even get eighty percent of the vote. Yeah, no, no, he didn't. No. Not even cl- well. It was close, I think. Right? Wasn't it? Or I don't know. It was close. Yeah. He got like seventy nine point whatever, but the minimum to get in is what seventy five percent of the vote. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So and and he didn't make it to his third ballot, and at the time he had the most saves. Yep. Actually, so- no. He didn't even make it until two thousand eighteen. After yeah, Mariano had already broken his record. Which he, you know, Mario, you said before, he was a a one-hit or one-inning pitcher, and Trevor did a lot more one- or two-inning close than he did. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, We should really wrap this up. Tom, I would love to talk to you after we end the show, but I want to give everybody some final thoughts. I'll start with Pops. What do you got? Final thoughts, racing, everything coming up? What's going on? Well, you you got racing Wednesday this week. And then Saturday and Sunday. So you get NASCAR on Wednesday, IndyCar on Saturday, and NASCAR on Sunday. So full week's worth of racing again. And uh, it's been interesting, to say the least. Absolutely. T, what you got? Uh, I don't really think with our audience I really have to say this, but if you're trying to get a point across, don't, you know, set buildings on fire and loot <laughs> businesses because that's not the way to get people onto your side. Gotcha. All right. Uh, my final thoughts. Remember, never take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. The world for you and everybody else cannot get better unless you are there to change it. Uh, there's plenty of resources out there. Warrior Point, Balance Stress. There are tons of things out there to help you out. Please don't take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And That's Thomas, like don't burn down buildings? Well... Yeah, and that too as well. Uh, Thomas Brickner, final word, sir. Just thanks for having me on. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, man, I love having you on, man. I would love to bring on some more. And, uh, hey, thank everybody for tuning in and sharing out. I know it's a weird weekend and everybody's kind of locked down and not tuning in, but that's okay. We're good with that. And, uh, hey, we love you all. God bless. And have a good night. Take care, everybody.